Hey, welcome to the uh, Ninth Black and White podcast. Uh, obviously, we are doing a video format now, so this is a total experiment. A whole bunch of things are different this time around. We're not talking about HBZ, so change a channel. Don't change a channel. But if you came for HBZ, we're not talking about that. We're talking about other stuff that is equally as cool. Uh, we've got a host. Virginia tonight is hosting. Um, I'm going to give the reins in a second. Uh, this is a total experiment, so buckle up, I guess. Yeah. Um, you guys want to introduce yourselves? Sure. Uh, I'm Kira. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Virginia. I am a biology major here at Western, and I'm actually from San Francisco, so I'm not actually from Washington. Fun fact. And shout out to the Digital Media Center today, where we're filming all of our podcasts today. Um, I am your host today, not Dylan. It's my turn now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, do you want to get started? Yeah. Cool. So, we're here to talk about like your adventures together uh, as journalists covering protests. So, basically, where did it start? It was a random day in 2014, in the summer, I think. Yeah. I didn't even know you back then. That's the weird part. Like, I knew who you were, but, like, I didn't really know you. Yeah. And you're like, dude, you're going to this thing. I want to go to it. It's like, okay. <laughs> no, didn't you put a shout-out on Facebook saying, like, hey, oh, that's this what thing's it was. happening. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm going to be there. Yeah. I was weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just showed up and like, hey, person I kind of don't know, but what's up? We're taking pictures. Yep. And, uh. It was a little weird. The protest was cool, though. It was a mm -hmm. protest for Palestine, and it was right before Seafair, so there's actually a ton of people out. Um, I remember the tank was there. Like, God, that was super tank. awkward. They're talking about like how the U.S. is funding Israel and to kill Palestinians, et cetera, et cetera. And it's Seafair, so on a trailer rolls this Bradley. No, it wasn't a Bradley. It was a striker vehicle. It was an eight-wheel oh. like off-road troop carrier thing. Like super awkward. Um, but yeah, we got some good pictures. We got a picture of, I got a picture of a lady with a flag walking in front of McDonald's that I thought was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. It can be super awkward. Um, no, it was cool. Um, I hadn't really, this was one of the first protests I actually took pictures of. I took pictures a couple years before uh, with a cell phone camera. But this was cool because you could get full frames of people and try to get emotions. This lady was super excited. I got another one that was kind of cool with a Jeep. I think it was a Jeep that drove by on the street. But... What you can't see in the in the picture is however, oh, you kind of, kind of can see it on the right. People cheered, just lost their shit. This guy, like, gunned it up the side of the road near the crowd <laughs> with flags sticking out the window. It was like, yeah, it's awesome. But, yeah, yeah it, was, it was a cool thing to go to. It was super peaceful. Was too. this in Seattle? Yeah, it was in Seattle. Yeah. It, was, um, it was right outside EMP, actually. Kind of walked around a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I remember I got another cool shot of a flag um, from underneath the flag. Um, Somewhere. Maybe. Maybe. There it is. Yeah, here it is. That's beautiful. <laughs> this is the one that you actually took a photo of me taking that my uncle so lovingly dubbed Up the Skirts of Giants. Because <laughs> 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 he said he'd heard of, you know, standing on the shoulders of giants, but the photo that Dylan took of me taking this looked like I was shooting a photo up somebody's skirt. <laughs> I really uh, like skirts it. of giants. I yeah, really no. like it. Before we go any further, I just want to tell everyone Kira's a way better photographer than I am. She's going to like shake oh her God. head and look away. Now but I'm gonna blush and I'm I got yeah. a camera for Christmas. Yeah, uh, no, it's for my camera. birthday. You can't blush. No blushing. <laughs> I got a, a, a Canon T3, which is like an entry level Canon for my birthday. I didn't know shit about photography. I got a D in high school in photography class. It was all bad. I didn't know what I was doing. And then Kira's pictures are amazing compared to mine, in my opinion. So just oh my God, if my you God. see a shitty picture, it's my picture. Such a beautiful lighting. Yeah, 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 you got the reflection, and I just, I can't, I, I don't know how, so, yeah. yeah, there we go, see, look at this, look at this, you got the framing, I'm going to break out these technological words, I don't know, because I got a D in high school in photography, you got the framing, you got some dude in the upper left corner doing something with something, you got, <laughs> you got the sun coming through the flag, the flag is waving, that's majestic as shit, and I didn't get any pictures like those. I think that arm might actually be yours. And I got in your picture. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I kind of liked having that there, though, just because, you know, it it didn't, the flag didn't completely cover the frame. Yeah. And it was nice to just see people in it. Um, another photo that I got was a guy during the die-in that they did in Como right. um, Plaza. Um, he laid down with a flag, and uh, there were a bunch of people just kind of filling the plaza, doing a staged die-in. And this guy was just kind of laying there, and uh, yeah, I just really liked that moment. It was kind of intense. I, w I hadn't been to a die-in before. I mean, it's got kind of popular with the Black Lives Matter thing, but 
I had never seen a group of 200 people just lay down and pretend to die in the middle of a plaza. Jesus. And then they had those, they had pictures, they had like, um, like white pieces of paper with like outlines of faces on them like this when they laid down. And it had the names of people, mostly children, who had been killed in bombings that summer. That was a shitty summer for Palestine. Yeah, no, this, this was one of the first protests I'd actually gone to to photograph. And uh, I remember I was going to go and photograph, but I wasn't too sure how long I was going to stay. And then you posted on Facebook that you were going to be there. I'm like, I sort of know, Dylan. Let's just <laughs> see what happens. And then I remember we were talking at some point while we were walking between the different locations of the protest. And you were like, oh, what are you going to try and go into? I'm like, I'm really interested in combat photography. And you're like, oh, my God, yeah, me too. Me too. So, we'll be friends. Yep, yeah. instant friendship. Yep. <laughs> So you said it was like a Facebook shout out, so y'all knew each other from HVZ already? Yeah, we knew, we kind of ran with people who ran with each other, like we had mutual friends, but didn't really know each other. I didn't even know you were a visual journalism major. Yeah, same. So, so yeah, thanks Facebook. Yeah, uh, <laughs> bringing people together. Yeah, and then we've had hella adventures since then. Um, yeah. I guess Palestine was just the first one. So speaking of next adventures, <laughs> that segue. Uh, wasn't the next protest you covered uh, the Black Friday protest? Yeah, that was Black Friday 2014. 14. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh shit. Yeah. Yep. That was yep. the next one. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was really rainy. Yeah, it was. Well, it it rained off and on. It wasn't. It was the it was, worst. We've been it was in. a damp day. Yes. <laughs> Soggy. <laughs> yeah. But moist. That was that was the <laughs> that was the first um, uh, protest that I went to for the Black Lives Matter movement. It was kind of picking up. It was after the non-indictment of Darren. Wilson, is that his name? Yep. Shot Michael Brown, jury didn't convict him. Whatever your politics on that, that's not really relevant to like why we were there. We were there because people were pissed off and I guess we're, yeah. our job is to catalog that. Um, so now that that protest has kind of been incorporated with the Black Friday protests that usually take place in Seattle, which are the, uh, you know, don't shop on Black Friday. So now that, cor uh, that protest and the Black Lives Matter have kind of merged for the past couple of years. Yeah, the slogan is something like Black Lives Matter, Black Friday doesn't. Yes. It's the whole like, instead of shopping, you should be out um, trying to fix shit, but people don't really take to that apparently. Um, I'm trying to remember the pictures that we got from there. Um, well, I know there was one in the subway. Uh, oh, that's right. Know, you guys call it a subway up here, yeah? Um. I don't know what we call that actually. It's like a metro tunnel. Okay, uh, the metro tunnel then. It's totally a subway. There we go. <laughs> there's no trains though, it's only there buses. There is a train. There, oh, there's buses. There's a light rail. Okay, <laughs> whatever it's called, they were trying to get into yeah. it and uh, the police wanted to keep them out of it. So they all kind of barricaded it and formed a human pillar to keep it up. <laughs> um, but the police, not in this shot, but in a different shot I've got that I didn't bring today. Um, the police have these giant cans of pepper spray like that a monster shoot energy drink size. very, very far. Oh. Yeah. And so in this photo, the guy in the middle in the red jacket had just gotten hit full on in the face, point blank, Ouch. with that pepper spray. And the guy with the ironically labeled kind umbrella is <laughs> shielding him from more pepper spray. I was just impressed this guy was like, his face was on fire and he was still holding up the thing. Um, Eventually, one of the cops grabbed onto the gate and did like a swinging kick. Yeah, I forgot about <laughs> and that. Just, <laughs> just Sparta kicked this fucker out of the way. Blew people over, and then the gate came down, and we're like, okay, time to leave, time to get out of here. So I remember just following you as you just yeah, hauled it. Yeah, because when that when that whole group turned, that was a total like legal entrance to go into. By the way, it wasn't illegal for anyone to go in there, but when the group turned in, the two sheriffs that were there at the time didn't want people going there. I don't know why they thought two versus three hundred was going to work. But a few people squeezed in, you squeezed in, I squeezed in, like nine other people squeezed in, and then they started fighting at the gate. Um, and that meant that we were stuck on the inside and we couldn't get out. And like you said, once they started Sparta kicking everybody out of the way, they got the gate closed. And I had the thought, okay, <laughs> gate's closing. They're going to turn around and be super pissed off at whoever's behind them. Time to go. So we turned around and ran down the, the stairs. And because this is at Westlake Center in Seattle, we ran down the stairs, busted a ride up into Nordstrom, came back up on the street, ran around a block, and just came back to right where we started. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time we got there, um, people were starting to move on. But that was that was interesting. Oh, and when we walked, when we went down the stairs, hella riot cops came past us, and we were just like, 
I don't know. Don't look We're just us. going this don't. way. Yeah. yeah. That we was are, tense. We are lowly little photographers. Don't mind us. I kind of put my, like, thing in my jacket and was just like, oh, I'm looking at, like, whatever's in this window over here. Yeah, my usual go-to <laughs> is to just kind of, like, throw the camera around my neck, like, touristy. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, oh, yeah, there you go. I'm just in Seattle for the day. <laughs> um, yeah. But, so, yeah. So you mentioned pepper spray earlier. Oh, my God. Do you have oh experiences God. with pepper spray? Yes, yes, we <laughs> yeah. did. Oh. Uh, I don't know if... I have the photo of um, just before we got pepper sprayed. Um, but we did actually get hit in the face uh, with <laughs> what I later found out was bear mace, yeah. not oh. pepper spray. Yeah. What? Um, I found out later on from a friend who works in a sporting goods store because we had seen all the cops with their giant monster energy drink sized cans of pepper spray. And we're like, okay, so that's pepper spray. Um, the guy that got us was carrying one of those, and I found out later that that's not something that you can sell commercially. Um, that's that's bear mace. Yeah. Uh, which lasts for three days usually. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> well, pepper spray normally lasts for about two hours. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was during the collision of the police and the protesters on God, Boren it was Avenue. Boren and Stewart, I think. Yeah. Well, it's no, Boren and Pine. Boren and Pine. It was, it's near the Paramount. Yeah, it was on that Which, bridge. Which, that collision, by the way, <laughs> I feel really bad for, like, laughing at people that obviously are being hurt and, like, gassed by the police. But it's so fucking funny when you have, like, you know what a testudo is? No. Okay. Back in the day, the Romans would form testudos, which are boxes of troops with shields on, like, every side, so arrows oh. couldn't fuck with them, right? They made a fucking testudo with umbrellas. It's like this big, like, <laughs> a big turtle of umbrellas, like, slowly inching towards this police line. The police are standing there like, dude, don't fucking do this. You see, like, one flashbang going in the middle of it, and it goes off. The whole, like, turtle wall of umbrellas just crumbles, and, like, people run for their lives. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and then right after that, uh, one of the anarchists, because in all of these protests, the anarchist groups intermingle and try yep. and start stuff. Um, they're usually identified by wearing, you know, all black. Usually they've got, like, the gas masks or the paintball masks or what have you. Um, they've done that since at least 1999. I mean, this is not a new thing in Seattle's protest scene. Yeah, so the dude came up just behind me and was harassing one of the police officers who I had, like, inched up next to along this barricade of bicycles and was just like, I'm just going to take photos. Is that cool? And he just kind of, like, looked at me and nodded. Um, and so the guy creeped up on my shoulder and was trying to harass the cop and then ended up pulling out his monstrous can of what was bear mace and tried to fire it at the cop, but I had turned around just in that moment no. after taking off my glasses because of the rain and pulling down my kefia and turned around and got a face full of it and was just like, okay, I've got like 0. .2 <laughs> seconds and then this is going to suck. <laughs> so like... <laughs> found the first anchor point I could find, which was like the railing of the bridge, and just made a beeline for it, blinked, and just fire everywhere. So my side of that story is, <laughs> I, I'm also creeping up on the police line, and I'm, I'm talking to this officer like, hey, I'm trying to like lean over in your personal space so I can get a shot down this police line with the no man's land between like the protester fucking like turtle shield and the police. And, I, and I'm like, is that, tell me if I'm like, if I need to back up. And so I go to take a couple pictures, like, oh, you probably need to back up now. I'm like, okay. So I turn around, like, looking at my camera to see if I got a good picture. And I look up, and I see this asshole in a paintball mask, right? And I see him, like, raise this can. I'm like, what the fuck? And I get, like, halfway through <laughs> fuck. And when I get my arm halfway up, and it goes, psh, like that, all down my arm and around it. So oh. Kira got it way worse than I did. <laughs> she was like, ugh. <laughs> I got an arm up, and it got, like, in my right eye and my nose and my mouth. And instantly, it's like, okay, I've never had this happen to me before, but I think I know what this is. This is going to be fucking awful. And then your brain catches on fire. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, like, I walk up sputtering and, like, snotting up the street. <laughs> it's not pretty. It's not. Trying to, like, deal with this. And I, like, shake it out of my eyes, my nose, and, like, snot everywhere. And I look over, and I saw probably the saddest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And that's poor, soaked, orange, <laughs> sprayed, tiny little Kira clinging to her face with her left hand. And like clinging to the I five railing with her right hand, like, oh, no. uh, like trying to blindly feel her way up this railing. It was so sad. I'm so angry I didn't get a picture of that though. I can like, totally imagine that though. It was awful. I, just... I wish I had gotten a picture because I just can't like describe it as well. 
But I went over and like we walked you up the street to somewhere, and I think one of the people tried to get that milk shit in your eyes or something. Did that actually happen? Yeah, or? they were trying to, and then Emily, who was with us, would not let them. Yeah, uh, she's she super protective. She didn't know what was in it, so they ended up just pouring a bunch of water in my face. Which um, doesn't really help it a whole really lot. Does, it really like, does. It moves it. It, it dilutes moves it. it, and it's cold for like half a second, and then the, the fire just, it's back. Uh, so I remember we were like, okay, time to just get to somewhere where we can buy milk, just bottles of milk. Yeah. And they had blocked off every route to get to Westlake unless you went up, like, multiple blocks. <clears throat> um, so I just remember running through alleys with you, like, spitting into bushes yeah. because just <laughs> snot and spit and tears everywhere. We took a hella jank shortcut to get to Westlake. Um, we went, like, under I-5, which is really weird. Um, but then we get there. And I was like, if you ever want to know what it's like to be a dragon, spray yourself in the face with bear mace. Because, like, when you <laughs> breathe in, it's super cool because the air coming in is fine. And then when you breathe out, it feels like fire is coming out of your nose. Like, I if it gets like in your I nose. I don't want to do that, though. If anyone does, that's the way to do it. Spray yourself in the face and then breathe. That's what it feels like to be a dragon. So, dragoning our whole way there, right? We get to Westlake, and there's line it's Black Friday. There's lines everywhere. It's, I just need milk. I'm going to fucking die. So, we go to the bathroom. Maybe we can just wash this shit out, right? I go into the bathroom, and here's where our experiences differ very much. <laughs> I go into the bathroom, hit the, like, it's one of those automatic only one button push for the sink things. Immediately, it's hot water, which is awful. <laughs> I'm trying to get this out of my face. None of it works. I look around. All the guys in the bathroom are like, like, <laughs> what girl pepper sprayed this guy? This guy's a creep trying to get this pepper spray out of his eyes, right? And then I went out to do something else. But apparently, girls' bathroom was much more hospitable. Oh, God, yeah. So there was a huge line because it's Black Friday in a women's restroom in Westlake Center. Huge line. I, like, blew past all of them. I'm like, I just need to get to the sink. Toilets are all yours. Um, so I get to a sink. Same thing. Water's hot. I'm like, well, this is going to suck, but I need this off of my face. So throw hot water on. Makes it burn more. I'm like, okay, well, this sucks even more. <laughs> And this little girl standing next to me is, like, looking at me kind of weird. And her mom looks over and is like, are you okay? Because, like, I am, like, crying, snotting everywhere. <laughs> she's like, did you just get broken up with or something? Like, no, I got pepper I spray in the up. face. <laughs> and she's like, what? I'm like, yeah, one of the anarchist protesters hit me with it. And then, like, in one of the stalls behind me, I hear, hold up, I got this. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So somebody comes out of the stall, washes her hands, and then puts water on a towel waves the towel around and is like, okay, tilt your head back. So I do that, she lays the towel on my eyes and is like, okay, leave it there and then get a new towel once that one starts burning again. And so I was doing that a few times and that really helped. So that was a nice trick that I learned. We, water didn't do it though. I mean, we ended up coming out of the bathroom. I don't remember if it was me or you or Emily, but someone got us a bunch of cartons of milk. And so what we did was we basically took all the napkins we could find from the Westlake food court, right? And made like a napkin pyramid and just dumped milk on it and then like mushed faces into it. <laughs> We were just trying to get this out of our eyes. The problem with pepper spray or bear mace is once it's on something, if you touch any part of you with that, you're fucked. So if you don't it's change... It's like poison ivy. Exactly. If you don't change out the napkins that you're using, you'll just put it right back in your eyes. Or mm. if it's on your camera strap... Yeah, because I usually run around with my camera strap like wrapped multiple times around my arm rather than over my shoulder. And when I was turning around into it, he got my camera strap, the top of my camera, which luckily I had a plastic bag over it because of the rain. Um, so that was like all orange, uh, and I didn't realize it had gotten so into the strap. So I went to put the strap back on, and for like months, I'd go to put the strap back on, and like <laughs> slight burning on the arm. Or you like wipe your nose with your sleeve, right? And then you go doing something else, you're like, oh, now my eye's on fire, and you stick your sleeve in your eye, and it makes it worse. I've been tear gassed <laughs> and bear maced. I will be tear gassed a hundred times before I'd be bear maced like oh it's God. that yeah. bad yeah. tear gas wow. is so much easier to deal with like it stings temporarily and then as soon as you get back into clear air you can fine. run from tear gas you can't run from mace <laughs> once it's on you <laughs> but yeah black friday that year was kind of a shit show that was the first year that they did that um they ended up they wanted to shut down the westlake uh, tree lighting ceremony it's a big ass christmas tree in westlake that they have a ceremony for and I'm not going to go into the coverage of that because I will go on an angry rant for half an hour about how it was inaccurate and how a Western graduate was part of that. Um, but <laughs> but they tried to shut it down. They didn't shut it down, but they were chanting over the Christmas music that at that point had been turned up so loud that Canada could hear it. I remember I got yelled at by a drunk woman who was like, she still had her glass of wine, me and another oh, photographer. Yeah, I forgot about she was that. screaming at us about how we needed to get jobs. 
So the, the, some of the Black Lives Matter people went upstairs and through this curtain, which was like a VIP section, all these like hoity-toity people with like nice wine glasses, like holding them like this. I don't even know what that does, but they're walking so around. So you can swirl it. Oh, so you can swirl it. So they, uh, they stormed that place and went onto the balcony. All these like, I don't know if they were actually rich people, but they're all dressed super nice compared to everyone else. You kids can't be in here and drunk like, you had a name for her and I don't remember what it was. I don't even remember. But it, it wasn't flattering, but that lady just was not having any of it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was quite the experience. And then uh, tree lighting happened, and then everyone kind of went home. <laughs> kind of yep. fizzled out. Um, um, before we move on to the next topic, do you want to go over the photos that we have of that? Just cause yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm bad. I don't remember if I picked any yeah, pictures Yeah, so we'll just have those. them cycle through, maybe? Yeah. Then we can talk about them as they come up. Unless we don't have any for that day. Do you have We some? totally do. Oh, we, we do? definitely do. Some Black Friday? I've got at least one more. Do you remember what you called it? Uh, it was uh, Sam color-coded them. Here we go. Hey, yeah, that's a great um, picture. So yeah, this one, you were literally right above my head. I've got the same, this. same, just t t slightly different angle. Uh, and the guy that pepper sprayed us was actually just out of frame to the left on this. But yeah, um, at one of the stops where they were blocking traffic, the anarchists were getting in the face off with the cops, trying to, you know, egg them into doing something. Um, of course, the cop was just kind of standing there glaring at him, not doing much. You gotta wonder, like, if you look at this picture, you gotta wonder what that cop is thinking. Is he thinking, like, fuck you, get out of my face? Or is he thinking, this guy's a total twat? Maybe he's, he's wearing a gas mask for with the no night. filter. <laughs> yeah, or maybe he's like, I think when I'm done Should staring I leave at this guy. On? <laughs> Should I left the oven on? <laughs> yeah, you gotta wonder. And then, dude, that's another. Ma See, this is what I'm talking about. Here's another <laughs> masterful picture that you took of this guy in front of the police. Yeah. Um. This was before they formed one of the barricades. Uh, this was shortly before the pepper spray incident because they moved over one street to try and bypass the barricade. But yeah, uh, they saw the cops blocking the road and they weren't sure what to do. So this guy who had been leading the charge with like a paint bucket drum thing oh, yeah. um, ran up and did that. And then a bunch of other people came and they all like held hands. Uh, I got another photo that I didn't bring of this one woman who was yelling, but like the emotion on her face was just, it was... I love it. Yeah. These, like, Black Friday, like, photos are really interesting and, like, really cool because you can really see, like, the emotion that's, like, coming through in all of these pictures and, like, like the framing is really nice and you can kind of, like, see the story of the protest through these pictures. When I started, I used to take pictures of a lot of signs because I thought signs were cool. Mm -hmm. And then the more I did it, it's like, nah, fuck signs, the faces. <laughs> like, you can get the story from the faces of people, which yeah. is, I've definitely tried that a lot more since I started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing I've noticed is, like, you can get signs, but don't make it the focal point. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. that's something that I've had a few editors tell me. It's just, it's, o it's okay to have signs in it because they're all carrying them, but don't make that your only goal. Yeah. Nice. All right. Any last thoughts about Black Friday before nope. we move on? Uh, Total shit so. show at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, though. Yeah. I, I, it was, a, it was, it was experience. a really valuable experience. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So May Day was next for y'all. May Day is my favorite day. <laughs> and Are you preparing for the next May Day? Yeah. That was the most intense protest you've been to so far, correct? The, the last part of the day, yeah. The last yeah, part of the it day. It was declared a riot um, while we were there. So Good times. Yeah. Was Black Friday not a riot? Black at that Friday point? was not declared. Not declared. They almost declared it a riot. Yeah. They were very close to, but it dispersed mm -hmm. before it became a riot. Okay. Um, May Day was interesting because it wasn't until four or five ish that the shitty stuff happened. So from ten a.m. to five, there were workers' rights protests, Black Lives Matter protests, mm -hmm. um, immigrants' rights, minimum wage, people boycotting some farm that makes oranges or something like a whole bunch of like a smorgasbord of workers rights stuff there's also the crazy guy that got stuck in the basketball hoop oh shit i, <laughs> I have a photo of it okay okay we'll get to that yeah we'll get to that <laughs> i um, love that story the uh it was cool i mean all these different people from different unions were there it must have been like 500 plus people at the like the once they met up at judkins park and went downtown totally peaceful no issues with the police all day yeah, there it were was kids cool. there. Yeah, there were kids, yeah. There were some really cool performers, actually. If you uh, you can pull up a photo I took of the There were Aztec dancers? Right. Yeah. Um, oh, God. You, you had the, the name. name. Yeah. I had the name. On, on the caption of the photo on my website, I have the name. Um, but, yeah, they had these amazing performers that over half of them, literally, they did this performance all the way through Seattle, all morning, most of them barefoot. So much respect for these guys. Oh my God. That's beautiful. They basically did this for people who know Seattle from um, MLK and Jackson to I-5, which is like two and a half miles-ish, mm -hmm. I think. 
the, the route that we took was like two and a half miles. And it went very slowly. It went very it so slowly. Painful. And they danced the whole time. Nobody was never not dancing. It was crazy. Yeah, it was really impressive. And they had little kids doing it too. Yeah. I can't do that cardio. <laughs> no, I, I can't either. Um, I was having a hard enough time keeping up with their like two mile an hour march and they were dancing the whole time. Um, but May Day took a turn <laughs> once people... So that, that earlier march went to the federal courthouse and then the great majority of those people went home at that point. Mm -hmm. And then some of the Black Lives Matter people came up to Seattle Central for the evening protest. protest. And um, they were kind of reinforced by a lot of, it's hard to call like people anarchists because maybe, excuse me, maybe they just like the color black and they're wearing that. <laughs> and they also don't want to show their face while wearing black for some reason. But some people do spray paint the anarchist logo all over the place. Like, so I, I kind of blank a statement them as anarchists, right? So a whole bunch of people like that showed up, and then once it kicked off, there was a sign, there was a picture I took of a sign that a whole bunch of these guys were carrying that said, um, put wings on pigs. And that, I think, <laughs> instantly, like, the hairs on my back of my neck stood up. This picture kind of shows the difference of uh, rhetoric of that day. There wasn't a whole lot of fuck the police before this point, but... Once we kicked off, like the, the tone wasn't like workers' rights protest. Mm -hmm. The tone was angry. I don't know if you got goosebumps when we started, but I remember running into you maybe 30 seconds into this march once it started. Like, dude, this is way different. I remember I kept, uh, I'd, I'd try and take photos, and then I kept having people run up and slam the camera yeah. down. Yeah. And uh, one guy came up to me and like bumped my shoulder and still looking straight forward, like mutters to me, you, you should put the camera away if you don't want to get hurt. And I was like, I it can't. Yeah. But thank you. <laughs> uh, I was I was I had the same problem. I was taking a picture. Um, I was leaning against the side of a parked metro bus and watching the crowd come towards me. And this guy came up the side of the bus, banging on the bus. And when he got to me, I thought he was just gonna go around me, right? And then instead of banging on the bus, he goes bam, like smacks my camera into my face. And you can't really react to that. Like if you say what the fuck, man, like eight of his friends are gonna turn on you. That's not really an option. You kind of just have to take it. The one mm -hmm. photographer that did react. Uh, I yeah. have a couple photos of him getting chased down. I didn't bring them. Um, but yeah, he was, I don't know what organization he was with, but... Or if with anybody. Yeah, or if he was just like us shooting it. Um, but he got chased down by a bunch of people because he was reacting whenever they were shoving his camera back out of his face. Um, and yeah, I've got photos of him running with like four guys on his tail. I didn't get a picture of this, but there was a, another guy who I think was just taking pictures for himself. He had like a 5D or something. He, uh... We, I, did, I don't know him at all, but like we saw each other and like got out of each other's way enough to start recognize, recognizing each other through the protest. And so he comes up, we're walking southbound on Broadway, and he comes up like right next to me, like maybe three feet in front of me, and turns around and like snaps a picture past me, right? And then he looks up from his camera and instantly sprints away. Like, what the fuck? And two people in black just come sprinting after him. So he weaves through the crowd, kind of jumps out in the open to the right, and pulls out a knife. And the two anarchists like come up and see the knife and just melt back into the crowd. Do you know why they were chasing I, I go up to him, like, the hell was that all about? He's like, I don't know, man. I took their picture, and they started chasing me, so I pulled my knife and said, what's up? And they ran away. <laughs> Dude, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, I remember watching that. And yeah, that was, that was some crazy shit. Um, that was a, I wouldn't call it peaceful from the start. People were, like, banging on windows and dragging trash cans into streets and shit. I did take a photo. I didn't, again, didn't bring it, um, of them picking up the trash, though. Like, that one group that picked up the trash after some people threw a dumpster into the middle of the road. Some people stopped, righted the dumpster, and started putting the trash back into it. And they're like, what are you doing, man? What are, why are you doing this? And that's something that the news never covered. They, they would like show someone knocking some shit over and move on. They wouldn't show the people that were right behind the people pulling trash cans who say, this is our city, don't fuck it up, and would immediately start trying to clean up. Someone did that with a planter, too. We were walking yep. by a planter and said, like, fuck your plant. <laughs> I was like, oh, not the plant. And then someone comes <laughs> over and like tries to put the soil back in. So Poor thing. It was an interesting clash of demographics and reasons to be there. And um, then they started warming up to the cameras as soon as things started really getting underway. And as soon as shit hit the fan, then um, they had no problem with the cameras. Like, they were not. Yeah. Like, you could go right up to somebody, take a photo right here, and yeah. they would not bat it. So I, c I can link this footage in the description of this video, but there's a point in the protest where, and you can see it on a helicopter camera that I think it was Cairo had flying over, um, you can see a guy pick up a traffic cone, not like the triangle ones, but like the tall ones with the flat base. Mm -hmm. And he kind of just lazily throws it towards this police line. And one cop kind of goes like that and like bats at it and then it doesn't hit anyone else. 
two, I just did a senior seminar presentation on this. Two and a half minutes later, um, the police figure out or think they've figured out who that is and ride their bikes straight in the back of a protest line and like Superman and pounce on this guy. All of the anarchists in the area turn on that situation. Whole thing gets out of control. Uh, it's funny to watch the footage. They come up and start like hitting the police officers with sticks and shit. One can of pepper spray comes out. Everyone bolts. Um, but I had a picture of uh, a couple people walking away from that, uh, flipping the police off as they were walking away. Uh, it was a. I think they just deployed tear gas. They. Uh, oh yeah. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was really hard to do. Uh, yeah, there we go. So uh, they formed a line. People fucked with the line, and then they threw tear gas and flashbang grenades and gashed the whole place. There's a guy on the left side of this picture, just behind the um, just behind the the Cascadia flag there. A uh, flashbang actually just went off next to him and knocked him off his bike. I see the bike <laughs> laying yeah. there. So he fell between two cars, uh, which was really sad. But uh, these kind of two guys to the middle right um, were just not having any of it. And I thought I think this is a pretty epic picture. But um, oh yeah, no, I, I love it. It's, uh, I just immediately started suffocating after I took this picture, which kind of yeah. sucks. But um, I don't know. It was, it was interesting that just that moment, like 30 seconds of arresting, changed the entire day. And from then on out, everyone was super angry. People got pepper sprayed. You get pissed off when you're pepper sprayed. People got tear gassed. And just the rest of the day just went to hell. So it kind of went from zero to 100 real fast? Yeah. It was. It was kind of like, it was kind of zero to like 30. People were getting pissed off, dragging shit in the streets. And then the second the police hit the protest, it was 100 immediately, mm -hmm. which yeah. was and interesting. I took a photo of the flashbangs going off. It's not the greatest because I was taking cover behind <laughs> some stuff. Um, but yeah. Like Ooh, that's a good one. The, the flashbangs do not go off in a very small area. And something that people often overlook is that it's in case in something and when it explodes all of that has to go somewhere and so there's shrapnel flying everywhere um, I got a photo later on of somebody who had a uh, huge bruise on his back and I remember he was trying to show it to some of the reporters that were there with news stations yeah, and they kept yeah. walking past him mm -hmm. uh, so I stopped to take a photo and talk to him for a while and yeah he had just been you know trying to get away from the flashbangs and one of the really large pieces of shrapnel hit him square in the back. Yeah. It was like a black bruise that was just like this big. I don't, mm. I should have, like, we should have written down what pictures we picked because now I don't remember. Um, if, if we have that picture, it was um, the flashbang they launch out of grenade launchers. They don't throw them. Well, sometimes they throw them, but this one had been launched out of it uh, yeah. and this, it hit this guy in the back as he was running. And they're supposed to like have a time delay on them, but when it hit him in the back, it just went off immediately. So it went off like against his skin. Yeah, you, you do have the photo of the uh, the guy, the, the cop with the... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And so I've, I've got a picture of, um, of police with riot gear. Um, riot gear and I'm trying to remember the name of the weapon. It's a, uh, it's actually, so the guy on the right here has a, and I don't know if I'm mixing this up, but one is an Arwen 37 grenade launcher. It's an Israeli grenade launcher from the 80s, I think. And another one is, I can't remember the company, but it's a less lethal launcher with pepper balls in it. So the guy on the right, you can see he's got kind of like a Tommy gun magazine right there. Yeah. Filled with pepper balls, basically paintballs and pepper spraying them. So oh. yeah, bad times. Um, that's how I've, I've had it explained to me. And then the guy on the right, I think I can't see from here as a grenade launcher, but um, there was one point in uh, the protest I don't know if I picked that one, but these guys cr tried to grab a dumpster to roll down a hill. <laughs> I was so excited for them to do it, and then the cops got to it first. But I remember uh, we were taking cover behind like this telephone pole. Yeah, the, uh, this this guy had a um, one of the six cylinder grenade launchers that's got six grenades. You pull the trigger, it cycles the next one, mm -hmm. and he uh, he aims it at the crowd like this, and I go, oh fuck! Like you can hear it on my GoPro footage, and then <laughs> I, you can't see it on the camera because it was on my chest, on my head. But I turn and look. And he pulls the trigger, and his launcher goes, and nothing comes out. And the whole crowd's like, fuck you. <laughs> and they didn't get swarmed because everyone was going the other way. But I, I was glad that that didn't come out because it was aimed right at us. Um. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, I think it was also terrifying when you were trying to change out your GoPro. Oh, I forgot um, about that. Because the way the cops do this when they're trying to corral people is they interlace their bikes, and they're allowed to use their bikes as a barricade. Um, and they, as one, so the, you can see from the other, or you can see in the other photo that Dylan had of, uh, yeah, um, of the cops all lined up and stuff. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot of cops, and their bikes are all lined up, and they chant as one, move back. And it can be absolutely terrifying when they're coming at you, which I think is the point. Yeah, definitely. Um, and and in, this, in this picture, these aren't actually the riot 
police. Yeah, this is um, just their standard protest. I don't know if I have, I don't know if I brought a picture of them. The the riot police have this, what we call Ninja Turtle armor. Because yep. they look like they're Ninja Turtles, like they've got pads here and like pads here and here and on their legs really and Really big rubber boots. Yeah, um, huge rubber boots. But yeah, Dylan had stopped to change out his GoPro, which he keeps in a little ammo can. And in a backpack. Yeah, so he had stopped at a table at like a cafe um, well, the rest of the crowd is getting ahead of us, and I turn around, and the cops are doing their, like, move back thing, and they're coming closer. I'm like, uh, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. He's like, okay, hold on, how close are they? So I'm, like, counting down the yards. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we have to go. Like, grabbed his bag. I'm like, we're going, bye. Um, Dude, the, the rising, like, in hindsight, it's really funny, but at the time, it was terrifying. The rising panic in your voice was just, like, priceless. I wish. I'm like, we can't outrun this. <sighs> yeah, dude. And so what happened was we could, I was afraid that, so sometimes what the police do is they'll do the line that moves up, and then they'll open the middle, and another, like, group or another squad of police will bike out on that and run down the street and run people down and then go like that and let the second line repeat. So I was worried that was going to happen. So I'm like, no, we're too slow. And I grabbed, I grabbed you by the backpack and like shove you through an open apartment gate <laughs> and close it behind us. And we're sitting like in the side yard of this apartment with our back to a pillar, like kind of both trying to hide behind this <laughs> pillar. And uh, I realized that we've gone into a yard that you can't get any further into if you don't, if you don't live there. So we're peering around this pillar, seeing if the police are going to notice us and come screw us in this corner, right? Because, yeah, they've got, like, lines and rows of people. So we're still waiting for them to pass. Yeah. Like, they're, it's, it's a big clump of them. So it was, like, 30 feet and then a fence with a, uh, a locked gate. And, this, and then beyond that gate, there's stairs that go up into this apartment. And this huge guy comes out and just kind of, like, opens the door and, like, looks around and looks at us. And I'm like, oh, my God, is this guy going to help us? And he kind of just, like, slowly saunters down and opens the gate and looks at us. Thank you so much. And we like run past him like, you might have just saved us. Thanks. He's like, yeah, man. <laughs> and then we, we go out the back of this apartment and, and meet up with the protest. But that was some scary shit. I thought, I don't ever like, I'm not afraid of getting arrested because with mass arrests, usually you're out relatively quickly. But I'd really rather not yeah. like, deal with any of that. <laughs> um, and I think that's probably the closest we got, we've gotten to being arrested. Except, maybe this is a good segue if you're done with May Day. Well, we also have to, there's the photo of the guy in the basketball hoop. It's kind of a funny oh, little yeah, segue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On our, well, we were waiting for the May Day protest to start. Uh, there's a guy that had escaped from the hospital and had run through a park <laughs> with a hammer, <laughs> climbed up a hammer? into a basketball hoop, and got stuck by his ankle in the basketball <laughs> hoop. Still with the hammer. And Yeah, still had the hammer, was waving it around, and they couldn't get close enough to just untie his foot. So they had to get a ladder, go up like the back and like cut him down. And then they had to put a spit bag over him because he was trying to spit blood at the cops. Oh. Um, I had another photo, but it's a little more graphic than this. So no. I figured just for this sake of demonstrating. Yeah, so this was the fire department uh, getting him all secure, putting, putting him on the... Dude, do you hands. remember how we heard about that? My dad knows that we're up there and he texts me, Yo, guy at Bobby Morris Park stuck upside down in the basketball hoop. And I look at my phone, I'm like, what the hell? That's right over there. And so we go sprinting over. It's like, holy shit, look at that. Um, but I talked to um, a 12-year-old kid and a 14-year-old kid that were playing basketball there. And the, the fire department had to cut the hoop net to get it down. And the kid said something like, yeah, this crazy man just came and climbed the fence and jumped on top of the fucking basketball hoop. And he's swinging around with a hammer, and we don't know what to do. So the fire department came, and then they cut the net, and now our rim's all messed up, and we want a new net. <laughs> Thanks, man. Moral of the story, yeah. new net. They want a new net. Did they um, ever get a new net? Is the know. other It Probably. We Seattle Parks is pretty good. We should. May Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember if I have any more May Day picks, but if, if I do and you want to throw it up, we can just talk about that. Um, the What was the other thing I was going to talk about? Nope. Oh, totally forgot it. Oh, look, a new picture. Oh, right. Uh, I got a picture of a guy named Marcellus Blackwell earlier in the day at May Day. Um, he stopped... And what I like most about this picture, other than the guy in the foreground's emotion, is the guy holding the bullhorn. He kind of looks like he's looking at him like, oh, damn, man. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. But he told a story about um, how his wife had died uh, while in police custody at a hospital in Phoenix, I think it was, mm -hmm. and that her defibrillator kept going off, even though it wasn't supposed to, when she was fine, and it tore her heart or something. Super emotional story that he told, um, and someone gave him a hug later, which was really nice, but... Um, yeah, I totally forgot about that. That's one of my favorite pictures that I've ever taken before. Um, yeah, I love the emotion on his face. Yeah. Yeah. I like the cops behind them. Like the, 
almost the line of cops behind him. Just kind of shooting yeah. the shit behind him. Yeah. <laughs> it gives context to it in the fact that you, know, yeah. you get the people with the blowhorn and they're shouting and then you get the cops just over their shoulders. Yeah. And then this was a picture that actually the Western Front ran when I came back uh, to Bellingham after May Day. Um, this was like a portion of the group while they're marching down, I think that was Denny. It goes over I-5 and goes over towards uh, Amazon. But it was a huge group of people and you can see uh, you can see like the smorgas. We got workers' rights. And the way in the back that you can't see, you got Black Lives Matter. You got someone boycotting a strawberry farm. I just thought it was cool that it kind of demonstrated the entire like diaspora, if that's the right word, <laughs> of of people that were protesting that day and how it was all totally fine until mm -hmm. until it wasn't. Yeah. So. I don't like how there's the American flag. Is that a Mexican flag behind it? Yeah, there was there was a lot of people wearing American flags. There was none of like what you hear in, about protests where people burn like American flags. There's none mm -hmm. of that shit. People were unhappy with the country and with the way things were going in the country, yet they still had flags with them and they were still waving, saying like, I don't hate America. I'm unhappy with what this is and I want this to change I'm for the better. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Pretty much. That, that was the sentiment of that part of the protest. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and yeah, that protest was great. Everybody was... They were super passionate, and it was really peaceful. But that's awesome. They were really empowered. Yeah. I remember you mentioned GoPro earlier. Do you always have your GoPro yeah, going for all the protests? Yeah, that was a segue for something that I forgot now. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I run a Hero 2 on my chest because if you've got a GoPro on your head, people will be like, why the fuck are you filming me? But like, if it's on your chest, they're a lot less likely to, like, in my experience, less likely to look down and see it. My um, problem is when I put it on my, my chest, I'm so short, I get a lot of, like, hip shots of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I usually... Someone actually brought that up to me uh, at the end of May Day. Like, police should wear body cams. I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that, right? Like, you have a body cam? I'm like, no. Oh, I guess I do have a body cam. Yep. Why aren't the police wearing one? That's a good question. But, yeah, I had a segue earlier that I totally... Well, I know the body cams have definitely come in use during HBZ stuff. Like, anytime we've had a disputed thing, we can be like, oh, let's just check the footage here. Like, or when people don't call their hits. Like, dude, I got you on like, film. You want to watch it? it? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Let's check this. Yeah. We should just have all mods wearing, yeah. like, body cams. Just being like, you say Amazon, this. Get See, Amazon to sponsor AS that. AS will fund that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone remember my segue from earlier? I don't. Okay. I have no idea. Okay, new segue. segue. Up a clip. I guess we yeah. should move on then. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So, going from May Day and mm -hmm. that, you know, shit storm. Right. What about Black Friday this year? Or this past year, excuse me. I think, I feel like people are catching on in Seattle that this is happening. Because it seemed like there were way less shoppers to start with this year. They didn't let people up on the balcony. Yeah. Um, they had a staging area inside the mall for SPD. Like, one of them came out of the door and we got a glimpse in it. Yeah. Like, cops and riot gear everywhere. One of the empty, yeah. <laughs> uh, empty stores with uh, frosted glass was mm -hmm. used for police staging. So they were anticipating it this year. As soon as the yeah, protest definitely. started, they locked down, like they had all of the entrances to Westlake covered so that protesters couldn't get in. Um, they tried. They, they, they did try. I, I have a photo of a uh, girl laying in front of Westlake. Um, when they managed to wrench open one of the doors, um, she just kind of laid down. And this photo, like this is something about photography that's kind of great, um, kind of. I don't know, it can be good and bad, is uh, she's actually laughing, she's not crying. Um, she was just kind of <laughs> chilling there, striking like a, like paint me like one of your French girls poses. Oh, that's right. And I s saw that and crouched down and she saw my camera and just started laughing and put her face <laughs> down. Um, Cause she was holding open the door for people um, so that the cops couldn't close it. And it looks like she's crying or hurt and she's not, she's fine, I promise. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I remember the segue. So, bike cops. <laughs> uh, in this situation, we were with our backs to a glass wall that went inside the mall. Yeah, you know where it was going. Oh my God. And uh, we oh were no. trying to get these pictures. And when the police came up to try to get people away from this door, they, uh, they I don't know why, but they went in front of us instead of behind us. So we were stuck between a line, of, just like six of us, between a line of police and the wall. And as they were pushing by, one of them, because for some reason you don't put your camera on your neck, one of them snags <laughs> Kira's camera strap, and I remember just, my camera! <laughs> and Kira's camera just going like, yoink! <laughs> oh shit, it's gone, With that my sucks. Arm. With your arm. And uh, I think you kind of just kind of reached over and. Yeah, yanked it was it. just hooked on the, uh, the bit of his, I don't know what bike terminology, the bit of the handle that like curves. <laughs> 
<laughs> the, the part like the handlebars go like that and then they go up? No. Or, like, or was it down? I, I cannot remember which direction. Part of the, the handlebar. The yeah. end part of the handlebars okay. that do the little thing. Like the racing handlebars where they're <laughs> yeah. like under like yeah. that? It got yeah. hooked on that. And uh, I, it, I think it was the racing kind. I don't know. There was something on the end and it got hooked on that. So like I managed to like, he, he saw that I was stuck and that I was trying to get the oh, puck out of his it? way. So like he stopped pushing long enough for me to like reach over and unhook it. Nice. Because I was stuck between like his thigh and the wall mm -hmm. and my arm was up here. So he stopped moving long enough for me to be like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting too because we were kind of stuck back there and then you can't take things personally in this situation. There's a shitload of people packed in an area. There's police trying to move through this shitload of people. You're going to get pushed around. You're going to get bumped. So the police are like, move. Like, one grabbed me and shoved me. Like, I'm not going to turn around and get all pissed off about it. I'm trying to move. I wish he wouldn't fucking push me because I'm trying, and there's people in front of me. But we ended up getting, like, corralled out of that mm -hmm. potentially really bad situation. Um, and I have a picture. I don't know if I kept this, but I have a picture of a... Totally forgetting what we named all these pictures now. Yeah, I remember all of them. Which one do you think? I should have written them down. I don't know if I kept it though. Like after we picked, uh, I have a picture of um, a cop kind of like leaning over and snarling at somebody. It was kind of a powerful picture because some of these police are huge guys, and then they put on all this gear and with a helmet, and that's definitely not that one. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was just interesting to see like the power shown in a picture of this enormous mm -hmm. cop. I don't think I picked it. Laying, uh, leaning down on this guy. After that, we ended up going to Macy's. We stopped by Macy's, which was pretty cool. I Go think Black Friday shopping? <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> Interrupting Black Friday shopping. I had this other picture of a, um, so what happened was this crowd tried to crash through this Macy's door, and so there's three sets of, or three like pairs of double doors, right? Mm -hmm. And one security guard, just like the Metro Tunnel, one guy, like, I'm gonna stop all these people. Didn't happen. I tried to squeeze by him, and uh, he ends up sandwiching, like he's in the middle, and he, pushes me and some other guy against the doorway. Again, I'm not taking it personally. I'm not going to turn around and punch him or anything. And I kind of just sit there like, well, I'm stuck. And then I think, <laughs> wait a minute, fuck this guy. And I just like push right through. And then I turn around and the whole crowd just knocks him over. And he gets tangled up in a banner. Mm -hmm. And he gets up and he says something like, you guys are all so dead. It's like, what are you going to do about it? Macy's security. But um, you made the front page of Seattle Times in, in yeah. Macy's. Yeah, I did. Except it was not my picture. It was me taking a photo. <laughs> So technically, my photo, as in a photo of me, is on the front page of the Seattle Times in relation to Black Friday. Um, 2K15. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. With, like, getting into the stores and stuff like that, something that I've picked up on is when you see something like that happening, um, you've got, like, that split second of do I try or do, and risk getting, like, an elbow to the face yeah. by, like, a cop, or do I just hang back and wait until they break through? And so far, every time, I've just been like, just fucking do it. <laughs> yeah, I've only had two of those that I can really remember where I paused. I'm like, okay, it's do it or fucking don't. And I've done it each time, and it's turned out well each time. One was at Macy's. I had to push my way through that guy. And the other was at the Metro Tunnel, which ended up getting us some good pictures from the inside. Like, that's stuff you can't get if you're outside. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm sure my, our luck will run out. Oh, and God, one time, yeah. it's going to be like, yeah, do it. And then you get punched in the face by someone walking by. But... I guess we'll get to that when we get to that. I still um, think I'd rather take a punch to the face than bear mace. Again. I'd rather take anything than bear mace. I'd rather get, oh, I don't know if I'll get arrested. You can't run away from getting arrested. You really can't. I'm <laughs> surprised that we haven't seen anyone get de-arrested. You ever heard of that? So de-arrested happens a lot in South America when protests happen. So someone will get arrested and they'll be pulled into like a group of cops. And protests will be like, no, nah, fuck that. He's not getting arrested. And they'll all just like black block the entire police line and beat the shit out of the police until this person has been retrieved from the police and then the whole line falls back and night. I mean, you're stuck with handcuffs at that point. I don't really know <laughs> what you do, but I'm still waiting to see that. Um, at least in Seattle, it seems like when someone gets arrested, the crowd's kind of like, oh, you're fucked, sorry. Yep. <laughs> Especially with that one girl outside the, the Westlake picture. She got yanked up into the police line. She must've been like 17 or 18. She yeah. looked really young. That sucks. Um, yeah. And then later, they tried to interrupt the tree lighting ceremony again. Um, <laughs> they course. were prepared for it. There was some really weird Scottish like folk dancing thing going on, which yep. was really awkward. Pick the whitest thing you can get on a dance and put it in front of a bunch of Black Lives Matter people. I was just praying that they would not play uh, I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. Because when we first rolled up, they were playing Christmas carols. And I'm like, please do not let this be on the playlist. Yeah. <laughs> no. Thank God it was not. So the, the girl you had laying in front of the door, 
she's super like sassy and took no shit from everyone. She and was I don't hilarious. know who she was. I never got her name, but I loved her. She was taking no shit from anybody. Apparently, uh, this guy turned around and called her the N-word when she was getting up in his space. And <laughs> she like just turns and looks at him and goes, have you lost your fucking mind? And proceeds to uh, blow a whistle in his ear for two minutes. <laughs> two minutes just funniest shit I've ever seen. Good. And the police come over and go, you blow that whistle one more time, we're arresting you for harassment. Like, really? Come on. <laughs> um, but then the problem with the year before that the protesters had was with the news cameras focused on the tree, you can't really get in front of that. So they came up with a super interesting way to deal with that. They were gonna, they brought, got a bunch of paper signs, like just regular printer paper, and wrote various messages on them, one of which was, fuck the police. They weren't prepared for that. It was some, it was one of the mall employees that came out. She had been handing out balloons to kids. No, but they had the, where'd the papers come from? The papers, they ripped off of their own signs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, okay. Oh, that's right, that's right. So a mall lady comes out handing out balloons. I totally remember it now. Like, here, have a balloon, have a balloon. All these protesters, like, the fuck am I gonna do with a balloon? Someone got the idea to tie their papers with fuck the police, Black Lives Matter, etc., onto the balloons. And then, I don't know how they coordinated this, but once the fireworks went off in the tree lit, they were gonna release all the balloons. So when the cameras were all focused up at the tree, all these balloons with fuck the police <laughs> go in front of the camera, and they couldn't use any footage from that. Nope, they couldn't because uh, with broadcast standards, you're not allowed to have fuck fly across a family show. Oh, geez. It was pretty, it's pretty genius. I, I don't know if we picked a picture for that, but I think one of us has a picture of you did. the fuck the police signs going up. It was hilarious. Um, if not, whatever. If not, whatever. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was some mad genius idea that someone had, and I don't, I pro I'll probably never know who that was. Yeah, I think, but, uh, I think overall that this last Black Friday, it was a lot more well organized, and it was yeah. way mm -hmm. more peaceful. Yeah. Like, they stormed a couple stores. The people that were in the stores were kind of like, Eh, they're not knocking stuff over, so whatever. And they didn't. They didn't knock like things around. They didn't like. They just disrupted shopping for maybe half an hour in each store. Yeah. And then went on their way and continued their protest route. And overall, it was, yeah, compared to 2014 Black Friday, night and day. Yeah. <laughs> I did make a friend that day though when we started. Oh yeah, you did. Wanna, you Dylan's BFF. Oh, Dylan's. Dylan's new BFF. Yeah. That's not Dylan's BFF. That's not Dylan's wishes. BFF. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Dylan's new best friend. You made you made a spooky friend that day. Dude, this shit was so scary. I don't have like an actual fear of horses. Like if I'm gonna ride a horse, we all ride a horse. But <laughs> when I walked up and this horse looks at me, he's like, Jesus Christ, this thing is like. Do you know anything about horses, either of you? Yes. Horses, yes, horses weigh a lot. A lot. This thing weighs a lot. Thank you for that scientific <laughs> number. This thing weighs a lot, and it's way bigger than me. It's so big, it's got a guy that's bigger than me on it, right? <laughs> and so I come up and like, I, can I pet your horse? I'm like, yeah. Like, how do I pet your horse? Because I want to like pet the horse in the wrong spot and have it bite my face just, off. Just don't, <laughs> just don't get behind it. So I, it. yeah, that's what you said. Don't get behind it. And so I kind of <laughs> just like good horsey. I don't like not being the largest thing that's alive in a room. <laughs> Or a situation. <laughs> Nothing's freaking huge. So I'm like, hey, good horsey, please don't kill me. I'm going to go back over here. But You seem so calm in that picture. He was freaking so out. Proud of I, you. I was trying. Muttering I'm like, don't freak out. The, the, if, if you freak out, the horse freaks out. Like, horses yeah. know. Muttering like right. a crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's just looking at you like, it's because he was muttering like a crazy person. Yeah. Dude, okay, so a couple of protests ago, uh, my mom works at the King County Jail. So she mm -hmm. has a bunch of stories about why people come in or whatever. And, um, or like they come in and they're part of the protest and so she'll be mm -hmm. like, how many people were arrested? I don't know, I saw like five. Oh weird, we got 17. And then the news later says 17, right? Um, apparently, a couple years ago, someone got arrested at a protest for running up and just punching as hard as they could, punching a police horse right in the face. Are you serious? So, <laughs> I don't know who punches horses in the faces. The poor thing. But yeah, I don't know. Poor I don't thing's know. probably already terrified yeah, and just probably. like got punched in the face. Why would you punch a horse in the face? Well, I don't like it's, it's, I, a cap, it's a capitalist horse. That's why. Oh, yeah. clearly. Oh. <laughs> Poor horse. Yeah. Um, another picture that I remember that I have is a, uh, I totally don't remember the kid's name. It was at the end of the day uh, of this past year's Black Friday. This kid came up in front of the megaphone and uh, he said something about, oh, was it grown up in like a police state or something? And now he's scared of the police because of what they do to his people, et cetera. It was really touching to, hear out of a kid's mouth and everyone thought it was super adorable. He said he felt more at home around That's people what it was. like him. Yeah. He felt he felt more at home around people that were like at this protest. 
than, than walking around, which is really sad if you think about it, that a kid says that. Mm -hmm. um, although I think you said FTP at the end, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done the same thing. Um, but yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if you have any other pictures that you brought? Or I don't think Any pictures so. that we haven't used? Yeah, are there any photos that we haven't used? Nope, okay, we're getting the now. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Wow, we went through all of them. We got our photos. Nice. Yeah, so Good that's, what, 2014, 2015, is 2016 now. It's coming up on two years of adventures. The birth of a friendship. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Gearing up for the next May Day. Oh, I was about to ask about that. May 1st, 2016. It's going to be a fun day. Nothing's happened this year, though, like so far, civil rights-wise. Nothing, no, nothing as huge as uh, Michael Brown being shot or the non-indictment happening. Oh, well, yeah, Trump starts making more headway. That's going to be interesting if Trump makes more headway. I would love to take pictures of a Trump rally. That would be just a total shit show. You're going to get, like, throat slammed onto a table by Secret Service if you take photos of a Trump rally, though. See, okay, that's, that's the question I have about that. If, if anyone hasn't seen this video, there's a video of a, I can't remember, LA Times, was it? Uh, I think it was New York, New York Times. Times. New York Times uh, reporter got out of the press pen, and apparently at Trump... By one step. By one step. Apparently at Trump rallies, press people can only be in this enclosed area for press, which is super, like, Hitler-y, if you think about it. Anyway, um, <laughs> he got out, and he's taking pictures, and he bumps into a Secret Service guy who turns around, and they have an altercation. He says, that he says to the Secret Service guy, like, fuck you, get out of my face, or something, like, rude. Mm -hmm. But the Secret Service guy turns around, choke slams the shit out of him, like, onto a table and onto the ground, rustles him down, and it's all bad. But, yeah, like, throws him against, like, a table, and then he falls on the ground. Yeah, so my question is, if you're not press, because technically you and I aren't press at the moment, are you allowed to free walk at those, or? I don't, I don't know. know. I, think I don't really know the nuances of Trump rallies. I hope I he comes here because I want to if, try. Like I don't. He's really. He's super. I don't know. Just from what I've seen of his different rallies, he seems to be super strict about. He's you probably going to try and corral you into the press. Because it seems like if you he's, if you're press and you get out of the press pen, you get in trouble. If you're not white, you get in trouble. And if you start chanting shit against him, you get in trouble. But what if, I don't know, I hope he comes to Washington so we can find out, because that would be crazy to take pictures well, of. Well, let's see, I think Washington has their Republican primaries May 5th, I think. <sighs> May's going to be busy. Or <laughs> Republican caucuses, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, don't know. I guess time will tell. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, so you got Mayday planned for this next year? Ish. Anything? Sort of, yeah. Maybe? It's on a <laughs> Sunday this time, yeah, so we're not so going to school. Nice. That's nice. Yeah. That's Any, really anything nice else that you're planning on? No, I mean, I missed that. All right. Oh. Well, <laughs> no, but we are we are starting to run out of time, so does anybody have any final thoughts that they want to? One thing I've learned since doing this is if you don't know shit about photography, just go out and do it. I mean, you're not going to... You're not going to get any better by not doing shit. I didn't know shit about photography. I've learned so much from just doing it, from watching Kira work, um, <laughs> Googling shit. I mean, if you want to if you want to be a photographer, you just got to find a place to do it and just mm -hmm. start somewhere. So uh, one word of caution on that same note is that, you know, don't get in over your head. Um, steps. Yeah. Don't go to a riot is your first thing yeah. to cover. That's probably start not a good Start small idea. and then build up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so that you can be confident in your abilities and your decision-making processes. And, yeah, I mean, it's it's really, the adrenaline is definitely a part of it, um, for me at least. Yeah, definitely. It's fun. Uh, it's, yeah. It's scary fun. It's, it's exciting, and you're, like, hyper-aware the entire time. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we've run out of time. So thank you for watching this episode of the Black and White Podcast. Hosted by yours truly, for once. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dylan. New host. No, that's okay. New host. New. I think new. you hosted better than I did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Um, okay. So we are still sticking with the traditional disclaimer. So any voice opinions are only the opinions of those voicing them. All advice given here is to be taken with a grain of salt. And if ever applied, only applied where applicable. So don't go to a riot. Yeah, please. Like, immediately, <laughs> please. Okay, so thank you for bla watching Black and White Podcast number nine. Everybody say bye. 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 <laughs> Anybody else? Nope. Okay. Dude, we faded <laughs> out. That was nice.